Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me. Today's look is inspired by the changing seasons and my favorite time of year, fall. I'm loving bold yet very feminine dark shades for this season. And as the temps cool down and the cozy sweaters and boots come on, a deep burgundy lip is the perfect way to top off your fall ensemble. Rich, full-bodied reds are flattering on every skin tone. Take some time to experiment at your favorite makeup counter and ask the beauty advisor to help you find the perfect berry shade for you. Let's get started. Hey, I'm applying Maybelline Dream Matte Mousse Foundation, and as I mentioned in a previous video, I love using this foundation as a concealer. I just love the consistency. I like the thickness. It does a great job covering up imperfections, um, under eye circles. So what I do is I purchase it in a couple of shades lighter than my usual skin tone and I use that as concealer. Next I'm applying my Makeup Forever HD Dual Matte Powder Foundation. I'm loving this foundation right now. It's just so effortless and light and here I'm buffing it in with a Real Techniques Expert Face Brush which I'm also loving at the moment. To prep my eyes for some intense eyeshadows, I'm going to be applying some Urban Decay Primer Potion onto the eyelids and underneath the lash line. This will create a base for my eyeshadows to stick to and ensure that they last all night long. To shape my brows and fill in any areas that are sparse, I'm going to be using my Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz Crayon. In soft brown. This is currently my favorite brow product. I love how skinny the brow pencil is and how it lets you draw in the tiniest and the most natural looking lines to fill in your eyebrows and shape them. I begin my eyebrow routine by outlining them. This adds shape to my brows and then I just fill in any areas that are sparse using the spoolie to soften any of the harsh edges. To give my eyebrows a nice finish, I'm applying concealer to the brow bone and to the top of my brows. Using a small blending brush, I'm going to blend out the concealer. This also gives my eyebrows a nice natural highlight. For my base eyeshadow, I'm applying Max Shroom to the entire eyelid and some on the inner corners as well. Using a fluffy blending brush, I'm going to blend that out. To add some depth to my crease and to begin my smoky eye, I'm applying Max Constructivist. It's a paint pot to the outer V of my eye and just along the crease. I'm using my Real Techniques blending brush to blend that out. You wanna be really quick when using these paint pots. They tend to dry quickly, so I would recommend working on one eye and then the other. Using a small accent brush, I'm bringing that same pigment down to the lower lash line. 
Adding to my smoky eye, I'm applying a deep berry shadow to the outer V of my eye, building on top of that pigment that we just applied. You'll want to bring that shadow down to the lower lash line. This really just evens everything out and it gives your eye shadow and your smoky eye a nice balance. Using my same fluffy brush, I'm going to be blending everything out. You wanna blend out any harsh lines. You wanna bring all of your shadows together into a nice smoky look. To finish off my smoky eye and to make the inner corner of the eye pop, I'm applying a soft pink shimmery shade to the inner corner as well as the center of the eyelid. To intensify the pigment of the shadow, I sprayed Urban Decay's Makeup Setting Spray onto the brush before I dipped it into the shadow. This creates a nice metallic, like I mentioned before, intensified shade and it really makes the inner corners of your eyes pop. I'm using a clean fluffy brush to blend that out and to blend it into the center of my eyelid, making sure everything is married nicely. I finish off my eye makeup with liquid liner and then I pop on my favorite mascara at the moment, which is Lancome Hypnostrama. Now that my eye makeup is complete, I'm going to move on to contouring. I recently picked up this Bobbi Brown foundation stick in a couple of shades darker, not lighter, than my normal skin tone, and I use that to contour. So I'm going to contour my cheekbones, down the center of my nose, and along the sides of my forehead. Now that I have mapped out my contour, I'm going to begin blending. To give myself a nice clean cut line, I take a paper towel, fold it in half, and apply the edge onto my cheekbone. As I'm blending, that edge will be protected and my contour will have a nice clean cut. I like to use my Real Techniques Expert face, face Brush to blend. Really, I use this brush for everything. It's such a well-made product. It's super affordable, and it really is a brush that you can use for so many different applications, and it's really nice when you have to be resourceful or you don't feel like packing you know, 10 different brushes for 10 different types of applications. So I would definitely recommend this face brush face brush. As I mentioned before, it's super affordable. So if you're going to invest in a good quality, super affordable um, face brush, I would recommend this one for sure. You could use your expert face brush to blend the contour of the nose. However, I prefer a sleeker, smaller blending brush just because, you know, you want that line to be very delicate and thin, or you'll just look like you have mud on the sides of your nose. You look like you have too much bronzer on the side of your nose. You really want something that can blend that out really precisely. So I like to use one of my Sigma um, smaller blending brushes for blending out the contours of my nose. After my contour, it's time to highlight. I am using MAC's Prep and Prime Highlighter in Light Boost. It is my favorite highlighter at the moment. I'm applying it under my eyes and along the bridge of my nose as well as in between my eyebrows areas of my face that the light would naturally hit.
To blend out my highlighter, I'm using my Beauty Blender, which is my blender of choice for blending out foundations and highlights. The Beauty Blender just does an awesome job at giving you a flawless finish. A great tip for achieving that flawless blend from the Beauty Blender is to tap the Beauty Blender. When I first started using the Beauty Blender, I found myself dragging the Beauty Blender across the foundation or the highlight. Really the best way to use this for that flawless application is to tap the Beauty Blender onto the product and your face. Tapping the Beauty Blender onto the product allows the product to really get blended into your face thoroughly. This in turn gives you that flawless application. Your makeup doesn't look too cakey and everything looks blended out so beautifully. To intensify my cheek contour, I'm applying my Benefit Hoola Bronzer right along the cheekbone where I contoured, as well as along the sides of my temples and down the bridge of my nose. This, like I mentioned before, just intensifies your contour and adds some warmth to your face. Building on top of my bronzer, I'm applying a blush made by MAC in the name of Mocha. Using a large fluffy brush, I'm going to be blending in the bronzer and the blush. To set my highlighter and to brighten up under my eyes, I'm applying a brightening powder made by Laura Mercier. And to apply this brightening powder, I'm using my damp beauty blender. Finishing my makeup application with a brightening or setting powder is an essential part of my routine. Whether it's a 10 minute makeup routine or I'm doing a heavy glam look like today, it just makes all the difference. It brightens up your face naturally where the light would hit it. It gives you a youthful, nice glow and provides a well blended transition from your foundation to your concealer. To add some volume to my eyelashes and to finish off my eye makeup, I'm applying some false lashes. I believe these are Lily Lashes in Istanbul. Now I'm on to my lips. Here I'm lining my lips with MAC Lip Liner in Beat. And before I apply any kind of high pigmented lipstick, I like to line my lips. This just helps me have a nice clean application. Um, I'm using Max Lipstick in Rebel today. It's a gorgeous, deep berry shade that's perfect for the fall and winter seasons. After applying my lipstick, I like to kind of clean up the edges by going around with a little bit of concealer. Also, I love a matte finish. Um, this lipstick does have some sheerness to it, but I prefer the matte finish, so a way that I get that easily is just to blot my lips with some paper towel. Also, I find that my lipstick tends to last longer this way, so that's a cool trick if you're interested. And that concludes my fall slash winter inspired makeup tutorial. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and learned some tips and tricks for yourself. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.